my name is Kylie Louise McCormick, and I'm a historian based out of Casper, Wyoming. I have my own business called KLM Wyoming Historian, where I get to share my research around the state and be a public speaker. It's been a lot of fun, and I have been so fortunate to get involved with the Oregon California Trails Association, which is this marvelous group of people that are dedicated to the preservation of our historic trails. And the reason I was able to get involved with Okta is because I've been researching this woman named Grace Raymond Hebert, who is really significant to the history of Wyoming. She, oh my goodness, she came to the state of Wyoming in 1882 at the age of 21, and, which was voting age in Wyoming. Wyoming, we were the first territory to recognize women's right to vote in 1869. So she was always able to vote her entire adult life. She came and worked in the general surveyor's office as a, car or sort of a cartographer. She was given the title of draftsman. She was the only woman in the office who was working as a draftsman of, out of the 40 draftsmen they had. And the last one they kept as they started to close the office and cut those draftsmen out, she became the deputy state engineer after 1890 because they liked her so well in that position. But she left that position pretty quickly and went on to the University of Wyoming, where she built up that university into what it is today. She grew the library from a collection of 500 books to over 60,000 books. And she also was involved in rural education across Wyoming. She was uh, the secretary of the Board of Trustees at the university and also a university professor there. So quite the impressive woman, and as you can imagine, if there was a pie baking in Wyoming, she had her thumb in it. She was involved, especially in the first effort to preserve the historic trails. It's amazing to me how that effort dovetails in with the national movement. Here in Okta, we're all very familiar and big fans of, I think, the most interesting man in the world, Ezra Meeker. What a fascinating guy. And there's a great Okta member, his name is Dennis Larson, who has done some fabulous research on Ezra Meeker. He has a whole series of books about Ezra Meeker's life, and one in particular about his efforts to save the historic trails. So Ezra Meeker, he came over the historic trails first in 1852 with his wife and young baby. And there he, in Washington, he built up an empire, a hops empire. Eventually that business fails and he goes up to the Yukon in Alaska. But by 1906, he has realized that that journey he took in 1852 is starting to fade out of national memory. And that much of the trail is starting to disappear. And it really bothers him that these younger generations, they don't know the sacrifices that it took to have the United States expand out to the West Coast. And he thinks that it's so important that we preserve these historic trails for future generations, that we honor the people who made the sacrifices on the trails, and eventually, he thinks that it's important that we actually are able to go out and see these sites and still travel essentially the trails and he becomes an advocate for a national highway system. I think that he lays the foundation that is necessary for the road tripping culture that emerges decades after his death. That Ezra Meeker, he's the original road tripper in the United States. Really incredible. But in order to accomplish this amazing national vision that he had, he had to work with local people at the local levels. So I'm sure what was happening in Wyoming is happening in all of these states that the trail passes through, but essentially Ezra Meeker, he was working with people like Grace Raymond Hebert and another gentleman who is very much involved in marking these trails in Wyoming, Herman Gold Nickerson. Herman Gold Nickerson, or he was sometimes known as H.G. Nickerson, that's how I usually refer to him, or Captain Nickerson. A lot of the trail preservationists today call him Nicky very fond, fondly because he set up a lot of trail monuments and also has inscriptions all over Wyoming where he is marking the Oregon California Trail. H.G. Nickerson, he was born in Ohio in the 1840s. He was 20 years old when the Civil War broke out in 1861. 
and he he served in an Ohio unit. He was promoted to captain during the Civil War, and then after the war, he was experiencing poor health. So he went west for that fresh mountain air to try and improve his health. It seems like H.G. Nickerson was always having a, a tough go of it when it comes to his health issues. But when he came out to Wyoming, he first ran one of the first freight lines up the Bozeman Trail. And he recalls the conflict that was happening during that period, that the gentleman who was running freight in the line ahead of him was attacked and killed by Lakota, and the gentleman who was running freight behind him was attacked and killed by the Lakota, but he didn't find out about it until he got into camp that evening. After that, he went over to South Pass City, which was a booming town at the time. South Pass City and all of the surrounding little mining cities, they had discovered gold in that area, so talking about Atlantic City and Miner's Delight. They had right about 5,000 people living in that area in 1868 and 1869, which is roughly a little bit less than the population of Denver at the same time. And they imagined it would grow up to be this great big metropolis. H.G. Nickerson, he was right in the thick of it. He was trying to start the community of Lander and went down there a few times and was repelled out of the area until he was eventually able to establish that community. And he was very much involved in the early history of Wyoming. He ran for the first territorial legislature in Wyoming but didn't succeed. He did get into the second territorial legislature and we are very grateful for it here in the state of Wyoming because he was a very essential, he was an essential vote to save woman suffrage, the women's right to vote. It was almost vetoed or almost revoked from the law and the governor vetoed it. That veto was almost overrode by the Congress, but he was able to vote to save it. So H.G. Nickerson, he was a big advocate of women's rights and women history. He put up markers for Esther Hobart Morris in South Pass City. She's the first woman to serve as a judge in the United States and, or to hold public office in the United States. And he also put up a monument to Narcissa Whitman and Eliza Spaulding, the first white women to cross the Continental Divide. And that was also part of the advocacy of Grace Raymond Heber, this woman that he was working with and going out on the trails with to really promote the women and the way that women were part of the story and part of the efforts to build up the nation just as well as the men right alongside them. And it's wonderful to see that first generation of trail preservationists recognize that and to celebrate that also invited out by Randy Brown who is this incredible Okta historian who's done such meticulous really almost unbelievable research we're talking about finding out um, all of this information he has he starts out with a partial inscription on a gravestone or a headstone out there in the middle of nowhere in a prairie and from that he has been able to build out a narrative of who this person was, why they were traveling, and even find their descendants in fascinating coincidence, sort of, or if you believe in more than that, sort of ways where it was just meant to be. And what a generous man to invite me out to go out onto the trails and actually see these monuments and markers. And that was a transformative experience to be on the trails. It is so wonderful to actually see the generations of trail preservationists and all of these different markers and monuments that are out there. And then to see the scar on the land is really unbelievable. These swales that are, oh, 10, 12 feet wide and eight feet or deeper. Um, the scar, the, the land that was caused by the travel of half a million people, the largest unforced migration in the history of the world. To quote a, a film, Footsteps to the West, that plays at the National Historic Trails Interpretive Center. And it, it is profoundly inspiring 
to see the work that has come before me and then to be able to go out there with Randy Brown and look at all of the octa markers that he put up and I was actually out there when he pounded one into the sand. One had an old one had been knocked over, the cattle that are out there scratch up against them and the wind and the elements, you never know which one is going to fade away first. And removing one of the old markers and putting in a new one to make sure that that swale on private land would remain protected and that people would know about it. That piece of land is up for sale. That swale is about to change hands and go into new owners. And it's Okta and Randy Brown and these people who really truly care about this history who are going to hopefully make sure that those new owners understand the real treasure that they have in their backyard and hopefully be able to continue to mark it into the future. I, I've been inspired doing this research to be able to get more involved in Okta. I joined the organization and I told Randy Brown that the next time he's going out there on the trails that I want to go with him. Because These trail preservationists who came before us, Grace Raymond Hebert, Ezra Meeker, Herman Gold Nickerson, have inspired me to action. And I really feel as though I've met a few other people around in my age group doing this work. And I really feel like it's our time to start, start taking responsibility for the work ahead of us and that it's time for us to start asking ourselves, what are we going to do about this history? It's our time.